You know what, what I'm saying? Be live. Iron Sharp right. the Back at it back again. Back at it once again. again. Once again. Oh. Absolutely. All right, so tonight we're going to do our third part, you know what I mean, of the Stolen Identity series. You know, where tonight we're going to, you know, talk about those Jews who say they are Jews. Them small you know what I'm saying? Baby. That's the feet yeah. the fire tonight, baby. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Synagogue. <laughs> Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to show it and, you know what I mean, and let people, you know, you make your own decision, whatever y'all want to, you know, but you pray about it. If you don't believe it, pray about it. Talk to the Lord. If you haven't watched the first two videos, you know, the first video we showed how the, the 10 tribes had their identity stolen. The second video we showed how, you know, the real Jews, the true Jews, well, uh, migrated South Judah. Yep. Martin migrated south into Africa. You know, so you you have to watch it, you know, to see it. Tonight we're gonna show how, you know, the Jews that we hear today are Jews, how they came into the identity. All right. Fake Jews. Yeah, yeah. 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 Small head. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we we'll first my brother Leroy, uh Webstar. Bring out Webstar. 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 <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's get that definition of identity. All right, let's go. Let me pull it up. Here we go. All right. Identity. The fact of being who or what a person or thing is. A close similarity or affinity. Well, say that one more time. The fact of what? The fact of being who or what or a person or thing is. Okay. Uh, who or, or what a person or thing is is right mm -hmm. so your identity is who you are right mm -hmm. and okay the, and, the, and the characteristics it says the characteristics determining who or what a person or thing is as well right okay, okay. so the identity all right mm -hmm. very good all right so now we're gonna we just before we get into all this other stuff let's let's talk about how satan tried to first you know what I mean? How he comes at your identity and how he tried to come at Jesus' identity, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll and we'll continue on and expose things. But first, when we talk about stolen identity, we first want to show how Satan tried to come at Jesus, you know what I mean, and question his identity. So let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Matthew, we're going to pick it up in the book of Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Verse 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, I'm going to pick it up in verses 1 through 10. Verse 1. Then Jesus was led up in the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when, he, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh, taketh him up into, a holy, into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Okay, so we see where, where, where Satan came to tempt Jesus. And this is what you have to understand, and this is what people have to see, how he tried to attack Jesus' identity. In Matthew 3 and 17, we see where, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, right? In whom I am well pleased, right? 
So yeah. now we just talked about, you know, identity of it being who you are. Yeah. Well, the most high just told and told everybody who Jesus was. Yeah. You yeah. are my son, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's his identity. You are the son of God as spoken by the father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here come the so thief. We, and uh -huh. here comes the thief, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you used the word thief, thief because when a is. thief comes, a thief comes and what does a, a thief do? A mm -hmm. thief usually tries to attack your identity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, or hide their identity, conceal their identity, or do something like that, you know, in some type of slick way, right? Mm -hmm. So the thief comes and then says, if thou be the son of God, what do you mean if I be the son of right. God? Just right? told you who right. he was. Right. Just was told what? you who he was. Right, and, and there was no question as, and he and, and Christ knew who he was. He knew exactly. His identity. But, exactly. But we, but mm -hmm. we saw we we saw this tactic from Satan before. Yes, we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, before. right. Did the same, did right. the same thing to Eve. Yeah, yeah. Both yeah. she Amen. she I'm knew what she that. wasn't yep. supposed to do. Amen. But right. He used the right. same tactic. Used mm -hmm. the same right. tactic. And, and right. Trying say? to change God's work. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the key thing with that is, what did he say? You can be like God. And you can yeah. be as a God, but not taking into consideration that you already made in likeness an image of God. So Adam right. and Eve, That's right. you know what I'm saying, fell back right. and, and got into the deception of wanting the, the power and not knowing they already had the power because you're made in God's <laughs> likeness an image. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. It worked, it worked once. Let me try it again. Let me try it again. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. And we see and how I'm glad y'all brought that up. I'm yeah. glad that y'all yeah. brought that up because that's exactly what happened, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. now he yeah. comes back and he's trying it again. If you mm -hmm. be the son of God, you know what I mean? Well, you know what God has said, but then you're going to try to make me doubt who I am, who I right? Am. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, so Jesus' uh, uh, reply is, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He just said that I'm his beloved son. So what are you talking about? That's right. right? That's right. I know who I am. I, I don't need I you trying to tell me who I am. Jesus, right? Jesus, I don't got to, I don't got to, I don't got to prove nothing to you. <laughs> right. Jesus right? wielded, Jesus wielded that, that sword. sword. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, he, and he didn't buzz from it. You know what I'm saying? And, right. see, and think right. about this. At the time Jesus said that, and that's why it's important to know the word of God. Absolutely. Yes. Because Absolutely. Because that is your defense against Amen. the enemy. Amen. Because now, right. if he, now if he went and leaned into his own understanding and started spitting out some other gibberish, then, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Eve did. <laughs> like Eve because did. Because remember, yeah. and yeah. got into that conversation. Yeah. to what God yeah. said, right? Let's, yeah. let's start touch it. He ain't say nothing about mm -hmm. touching it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right, man? exactly. Yeah. Well, if we yep. touch it, God didn't say, don't, you know what I'm saying? Say, he don't didn't say nothing about that. Right, exactly. Oh, okay. but we can touch it. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. Because so, he so wanted now to what, touch it. Right, but now when he comes back to Jesus again after Jesus gave him the word, what does he do? The next time he gives, okay, you know the word. Well, let me give you some words. So do I. Mm -hmm. and, and he said <laughs> to him again, if you be the son of God, so again, that's yeah. Christ that you didn't yeah. question my identity. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you be the son of God again, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, because he said it's written. He'll give his angels charge over you. So you go up there and just jump off. Jump off. See how the enemy know the words. See how the enemy know the words? Yeah, yeah. There if we go. you yeah. have sound in the word, if you haven't studied the show that's ever approved, that's how these 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 uh people fake. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead, yeah. say it. Oh, yeah. hey. <laughs> <laughs> how able you yeah. receive the entire world. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All, all this getting ready to come out. Oh, yeah. All this getting ready to come out. But yeah, but again, and that's so it says, so Jesus again said, it's written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So he gives him the word again, right? Mm -hmm. You gonna try to give me the word? I'm gonna give you some word back. I'm gonna give yep. you even more yep. word. You not, yep. you don't know the word more than I do. I'm mm -hmm. the word. That's so right. That's right. That's right. In the beginning, <laughs> it's like in the beginning was what? Yeah, the yep, word. Yep, yep, and yep. the word was with God. With God. So Satan, yep. who are you talking? You, you talking you to talk the word. To I am the word, dude. That's right. You see that's what I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. and right? Look, you so then. You can use that stuff on them other mealy mouths. Yeah. Now, 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 look, now, let's take it a step further. Look, now, if we're made in God's likeness and image, we have that same power over the enemy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Listen, but, but, but if you don't know that. That's right. Exactly. Right. That's, right. Saying, that's, why, that's, why, that's why Jesus said, right. I gave you power over the enemies and nothing right. shall by enemy right. hurt, you, hurt you. Right. That's right. Man, that's but right. if you don't know your identity, you don't if know you don't power. know who you are, you don't know what God said about you. Mm -hmm. You don't know your power, right? Yeah, they they find out who they are now. Exactly. Yeah. Right. If you didn't know, okay. now you know. Amen. Right. <laughs> so now what is so what he does? So now he takes him up to a high mountain 
and show them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he says, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. So now we see what you were really after. Yeah, yeah. You are an identity thief and you want the <laughs> worship and the praise of God. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You want the fathers, you trying to take the most highest position. You know what I'm saying? Yep, and right. telling people to worship you. So yeah, now right. we see That's what right. it really was about. You came right. after Jesus' identity so that you could get people to worship you. Yep. You see? Yep. From the beginning, Amen. I will be like God. Amen. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And look, and when we go back into the Old Testament, what got Israel in trouble in the first place? Disobedience. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. They forfeited Absolutely. everything that God said that, 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 that Israel was to be. They forfeited yep. it by chasing other gods, by bowing yep. down. down to those exactly. false gods. Yep. That's yep. what got, exactly. that's what Amen. got our blood Amen. scattered. Amen. You know exactly. I mean? Amen. Exactly. Yep. And so just like you said, God had gave Adam and Eve dominion in the garden. You were already like God because he gave you dominion That's on right. the earth That's like right. him. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Now he comes to Jesus and he tried to get Jesus, you know what I'm saying, to, to give up his dominion. Jesus didn't do it. But, this, but he went to Israel before Jesus. And guess what? Israel was supposed to be the chosen people, yep. the ones who were supposed to be the head of the nations. And Amen. what did they do? They gave up their, their authority by going after false gods. You That's see right. what I'm saying? That's right. Then became the so, tail of the nation. There you go. There you go. Right. And so that's where we're going to go with all of this and show everybody how this is the same thing. Now, we proved in the first video, we showed you in in in, uh, in Kings how that the 10 tribes, that once they got kicked out, they came back and they got their identity. Well, they never came back. The 10 tribes left out and then they brought Babylonians and all this type of stuff in there and called right. them Samaritans. And they wasn't the real tribes. You see what right. I'm saying? OK. And and, and and Sister Mary made a good point to me, and I want to make sure I give her a shout, shout out, out, Sister Mary. Shout I told out, you. Sister Mary. Hey man, what's up, Sister yep. Mary? <laughs> yep. I told, I, told you, I told her I was going to steal this from her. We was talking the other day, and she said, you know what? And, and I thought about you too, Bob, when she said it. She said, you know what? The thing about Israel's identity, it connects them to the covenant. Amen. <laughs> I said, you know what? You're right. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm still in yeah, that. Yeah, I'm still in that. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and I thought about you, Bob, because you know we talk about yeah. how Preflo talk about yeah, the yeah, covenant Preflo. connector is yeah. a tie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, right. yeah. But right. you think about it. When the, when the 10 tribes was out of there and they didn't have their identity, they don't know that you're the covenant people, right? Right, right. right. Same, thing, just same thing with the Southern Kingdom once they got kicked out of there. And that's the problem that we have here now. Once you don't know who you are, when they stripped you of your identity, you don't know that you have a covenant that's with right. the Most High. You that's are right. the covenant people, right? That's right, that's right. Okay, and, and, and all right, so now... And the, sick thing, and the sick thing about that is we have people, again, we know what we're talking about. When we talk about the people back then, but even today, uh, when we talked about it in our last video, we talked about how, who was the king? Uh, was it Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar. How, and... how he wanted Daniel in the house. Why did he mm -hmm. want Daniel in the house? Because he could, he could, uh, he could uh, you know, disseminate the dreams and, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, and tell people what, you know, let... You know, let the king know what what the dreams meant, but he right. also knew the, the power of Daniel. So again, remember he wanted Daniel in the house so his house would be blessed. You see what right. I'm saying? So when we go back to this identity. They think mm -hmm. that by stealing it, that they can yeah. get yeah. into God's yeah. blessing. You know, they can get right. into God's yeah. graces, and it don't work that way. Yeah, yeah. Man, that way. exactly. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna show how they even deceive the Christians. Because Amen. the Christians, yeah, the Gentile yeah. converts, once they got in, guess what? The blessings is on y'all because y'all accepted Christ. Amen. You see what I'm saying? But Satan Amen. came in and got you putting your hands on the wrong people, thinking and, 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 and trying to bless the wrong people. You see yep. what I'm saying? Yep. They did the switch and now they got you doing something you ain't supposed to do, right? Yep. But now let's go and show how Satan, you know what I'm saying, you know, likes to likes to change his identity, likes to become who he's not. Right, plays those identity things <laughs> like we talked about with a feast. So now let's go to Second Corinthians chapter eleven. All right, all right. Second Corinthians eleven, verses thirteen through fifteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers 
also be transformed as the ministers of the righteous of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. <laughs> Revelation <laughs> two, verse nine. Amen. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Mm -hmm. All right. Revelation three, verse nine. Behold. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So what we see in, that, in, in, in those verses <laughs> we just read, A, Satan transforms himself into an angel of light, light. right? Yep, yep. And so that angel of light yep. that most people don't understand, they call Lucifer the light bearer, yeah, right? right? That he was an angel, Free, right? Freemasonry. There you go. Amen. So you see what I'm saying? A Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light, and his ministers has transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll run around here acting like they're good and all this type of stuff, and deep down, they ain't serving the Lord Jesus Christ, and they mm -hmm. ain't about the word, right? Amen. Imposters. But, imposters, right? You know what I mean? That's what they do. Basically, yep. they're going to they're going to come at you. That's why Jesus told you, beware of wolves. You know what I'm saying? They come to you in sheep clothing, right? Yep. They're going to try to appear to be something that they're not. He's an identity thief, an identity changer. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Transforming himself all the time now. Mm -hmm. But what he what Jesus also told us is that the synagogue of Satan are going to call themselves Jews, Jews. right? That's right. That's they're right. going to lie and call themselves Jews. Right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So who now, that, who might that be? Yeah. Exactly. Small because, head, perhaps. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now, in this video, we're going to show it matters who the real Absolute. Jews Absolutely are. Absolutely matters. Right? Absolutely matters. Amen. Right? You know. All right. So let's pick up. Let's go. Let's go to our first video. You see what I'm saying? And let's go and see how they teach Christians. You know what I mean about the importance of the Jews, right? And the Israelites, okay? Right. So let's go to our first video. Almighty, Christians have been taught Beulah land is heaven. That may be to you, but Beulah land in God's word is Israel. Why? because Israel is God's firstborn son in Exodus chapter 4, 22. In the Bible, the Jewish people are the apple of God's eye. They are right. God's chosen people. They are God's covenant people. That's right. God Almighty entered into a blood covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that the land of Israel belonged to them forever. Genesis 17, 7, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. Listen to these next words. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. That means forever and forever. That means right now. Israel does not occupy the land. They own the land, saith God. Israel is not a political issue. Israel is a Bible issue. When God created the heavens and the earth, he was the owner of the earth. And as the owner of the earth, he made a real estate contract with Abraham in the 17th chapter of Genesis that the land belonged to the Jewish people. Therefore, the United Nations and the European Union have no say in the future of Israel. That's all established in the Word of God. <laughs> Add to that that God says, I'm going to be their defender. In Psalms 121.4, he that keepeth Israel. The word keepeth is a military term. He that guards and defends Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Israel has a unique national security it's god in heaven and he says i will bless those who bless you and those who curse you i will curse them whether it's a nation or a person now let's see if y'all caught this right what did he say he said the covenant god made this covenant with the jewish people 
Amen. Right. Did God right. make the covenant with the Jewish people? Nope. Or is that covenant with the Israelites? It with the See? Israelites. Yep. Israelites. Yep. See, they've substituted the Israelites Good catch, and threw bro. in the Jewish people, right? Amen. Exactly. So now we're going to see, you know what I mean? Because we know that everything is about the descendants, just like he said, the descendants of Israel. So yep. it matters who the descendants of Israel, Israel are. Is. Yep. Yep. You yep. see what I'm saying? And that's a perpetual covenant. So everything he said about Israel, when he said, you know what I mean, that, that Israel was God's firstborn, yep. that's what it says. When he says that, you know what, that if you bless Israel, he'll bless you. But if you curse Israel, you get cursed. You see what I'm saying? So it matters who Israel is, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. All right. All right. So now let's go and see what Jesus said. Another thing that Jesus said. So let's go Luke 21. Luke, the book of Luke, I'm going to pick it up in chapter 21. In verses 20 through 24 verse 20 and this is Jesus speaking by the way and when ye see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desol desolation thereof is nigh then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too for for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be a great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right, so we yeah. see what Jesus said, and what's very, very important in verse 24, they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The true Judeans, you know, when, when the Romans surrounded them, as we talked about in AD 70, Amen. they got killed and some of them were led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, right? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, right? Okay. So now, if those people are the real Jews, if they're really Jews in there, then the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled, right? Yep, yep. Uh, it would be fulfilled. It would be in yeah. the story, right? So there ain't no more coming in, right? You see what I'm saying? Because Israel has been woken up, and now, you know what I'm saying, the times of the Gentiles is over. Amen. But now, if that's not true, if these people, because Jesus told us there's going to be people who said they are Jews and are not. They are not. You, know, you see? And, and the, the real Jews, he told us, was going to be carried captive into all nations. When yeah. were they ever put on slave ships? And when were they ever carried captive into all nations? We haven't Never. seen it. Never. We, we haven't seen, seen it. We ain't seen it. But we see now woolly haired, feet the color of bronze people, we've <laughs> seen them put on ships and carried mm -hmm. away captives into many nations. Oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and enslaved for over 400 years. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Right? Amen. So it seems like that prophecy, and then remember we read where he said that the branches would be cut down beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, Amen. right? So that means that, you know what I mean? And when we read where the ships were coming, you know what I mean? The vessels upon the waters, we read that in Isaiah 18, that that happened beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So yep. that the, the Jews being cut down, the real Jews, had to happen beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, which places that in Africa. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yep. So we got a problem going on here with somebody's running around here claiming to be something that they're not. That's now right. let's let's go and let's show where the Bible tells us about the Gentiles, right? Amen. All right, Genesis 10 verses 1 through 5. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tiras, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rephath, and Torgamah, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Okay, Amen. so the Bible clearly tells us that Japheth is the father of the Gentiles. 
right? Mm -hmm. Clearly tells us that. And there's two was named, so Japheth's son's name is Gomer. And Gomer has a son, and this is important, the sons of Gomer, so Japheth's grandson happens to be Ashkenaz and Togarma. Remember these names, okay? Because we're gonna come back to those, okay? All right, so now let's go to our next, uh, let's go and show you the land. So let's go to the land, so hold on one second. So when we look at this map, you know what I mean? The maps according to the, the, to the Hebrews, we see down here, again, this was Ham's land down here, right? All right, so all that's Africa, all that's down in Africa, that's Egypt. Remember, Shem's land is down through here, right? But what we see is here with Japheth's land, all right? And what do you see? Now, this is Asia Minor. As we can see, here's Greece over here, okay? With Dodanine, right? The, Rob just read all these people. Here's Ashkenaz right here in Turkey, right? Now, mind you, you know what I mean? Magog and all this, here's the Caucasus Mountain. So everybody that was north, the Gentiles basically were those who were in Asia Minor, up through Turkey, all the way into Europe, right? Mm. Okay, and here's Togarma right here. Okay, the two grandsons of Japheth. Okay, yep. so you see where they were, you know what I mean? And they were the Gentiles. This is where the Bible tells us that all of these people were the Gentiles. Okay, so now let's go to let's go to our next videos and let's go and show some more videos because we got a we got a problem here. We got people saying they're Jews, you know what I'm saying, and we Fair got a, a, a controversy. Who is the real Jew, right? That's right. You're about to put it to All rest. Right. That's yes, right. Sir. All right. So let's go to some videos. Hi, Shalom, Shalom from Israel. This is Ola, the daughter of Jethro. And I just heard that you black people that was stolen from Africa to America, that you don't know who you are, but you are the children of, of Yahweh, the children of Israel. And I'm telling you, you have to come back to your homeland, here to Zion, to Jerusalem, because us, the Gentiles, we do need you. We need you to come and pray because you are our saviors. You the one that was chosen by Yahweh to live in this land, not the Jewish people, it's you. You were stolen from Africa, they deceived you, they told you that you are slaves, but you actually the children of Israel. And it's time just to come, come back. Come for, for, for your people, come back for us, come back for the whole Gentiles, because only you, only you gonna save us. So please come back to Zion. First of all, let me just reveal some things first of all is that um, uh, the Jews who were brought in Israel most of them are white not most of them, almost all of them are white including me I was brought in Israel from a country which is called Bulgaria it's a European country and I can tell you that in every European country there are Jews and there is so-called organization Jewish agency which is trying to take those Jews to Israel uh, if you track, if you track the, 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 this organization, you can find out that this is not an Israeli organization, this is an American organization. Jewish Agency is an American organization which has the, exclu the, the exclusive right to decide who is Jewish and who is not on this planet and who to be taken to Israel and who is not. Now, if you, if, you, if you do research, you will find out that in Africa, in black Africa, they're looking for Jews only in Ethiopia. They bring Jews only from Ethiopia. And I can tell you by knowing a lot of people, all Ethiopian Jews here in Israel, that they're treated very badly. Very badly. And many of them commit suicide because they cannot take it. So they come from some place in Ethiopia. They, didn't, they don't have much there, but they live decent life. And they, when they come here and try to be humiliated and, and, and so on, they, some of them don't, cannot even take it. Now, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that, um, why? why? Why from each white country, this Jewish agency is trying to, to uh, bring Jews? And when it's about black Africa, they're going to Ethiopia and this is where they stop. The only one place. Now, um, because of the same thing, they're trying to do the white supremacy here. They try to, to, to bring white guides here and to take the supremacy over Arabs, which are the local citizens, and over blacks, which are 
so far they only did chop and juice. Now, um, what I'm trying also to say is that that um, another question is why 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 America needs Israel? There's no in Israel. There's no there is no oil like in other Middle Eastern countries. There's no nothing they can be attracted to. But why do they do all these things? Why do they invest money, bring white people, and so on? When they build their system of white supremacy, just like in America, they build in Israel. Why? And I can tell you why. Because the true Jews, according to the Bible, you can check it in the Bible, you can read Job 30, 30, and some other places. They have never been white. They have been people of color. And they have not stopped in Ethiopia. They were in, West, in Ethiopia, Sudan, and they have settled in West Africa. From West Africa, they have been taken as a slaves to America. Brothers and sisters, blacks of America, it's you. You are the true Hebrews. You are the true Hebrews from the Bible. America going to do everything, going to invest as much money as it has, going to fight as much wars as they, as they can, going to invite as much weapons as they can, just to hide this away from you. Going to take Israel, going to bring white people here, and to tell you these are the Jews, going to do, going to kill you, going to kill Arabs, going to mistreat white people like this guy, just to tell you this lie, that, that you are nobody and we are the Jews with all the history and so on. It has been deleted, your history, you don't know who you are, don't forget about it. This is why it, uh, America has been taking your history away, never to find out that it's all about you. I'm telling you this, please, I don't, know, I don't ask you to come to Israel and to start a revolution. I'm just try, asking you to start thinking this way, to believe me a little bit. Because I'm living in Israel and I'm part of this uh, injustice. I really believe that people like me and you, we can, we can bring the justice back. Right now we see, you know, man, you got, uh, 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 I take it she's Palestinian and she said, you know what I mean, African Americans is you. You're the children of Israel, right? Then you got the dude who's an Israeli, and he says, it's y'all. Y'all are the children of Israel, right? And and the bottom line is, you know, when he even said, he said, America has something to do with it. And this is what we're going to really get into. Yeah. You know what I mean? America and Zionism, right? Yeah. And why yeah. they stole the identity, and then they're going over here, and why they're doing all of this stuff, right? You know, and how they, they orchestrated wars and everything behind everything, this, right? Yeah. Right? I remember so one thing, that, remember, like, how, and one thing that the lady, uh, the, the young lady, one one thing she... Ola? She re, Ola, Ola. Yeah, Ola. yeah. You're <laughs> you're yeah. Back it down. We know you know her name. Back it down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, she do respect the pain. And then a woman, Ola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, real quick, one of the things that I, uh, you know, I'm sure y'all caught it was she referred to herself as a what? A Gentile. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. You heard it from right. her mouth. She called herself right. a Gentile. Right, right. And to be honest, with, if we really get deep into it, the Bible does not call the descendants of Ham Gentiles. That's right. right. That's you, right. We just read that the Gentiles were the sons of Japheth, right? Yep, yep. But Gentiles has come the same way the term Jew has evolved into all mm -hmm. of Israel. Right. Jew, Gentiles evolved into everybody outside of Israel. Right. Amen. But the Bible clearly tells us that the sons of Japheth were the Gentiles. Gentiles. Right. Amen. OK, that's very good. I'm glad you brought that up. But now what? But another thing that the guy said, he said, you can go and check Job 30, 30. Right. So let's go look at Job 3030 30, and let's see what it says about that. Why he brought Job 3030. 30. He said you can go in the Bible and you can see mm -hmm. it in Job 3030. 30. So let's see what Job 3030 30 says. See what the word of God says. Absolutely. Book of Job. We're gonna pick it up in verses. We're gonna pick it up in chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. Okay, so we see that Job described himself as a black man, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's go Lamentations. We're going to pick it up in the book of Lamentations. <clears throat> I'm going to pick it up in verses in chapter 5, verses 10 through 11. Verse 10. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. 
they ravished the women of Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah. Now, remember what Ola said in the video about come back to Zion, right? Yeah. And he, she just now said, down, down, the scripture tells us the women in Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah, that their skin was black like enough, right? So yep. we see in Job where he describes his skin as being black and the women in Zion that they were described as being black, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. all the people of Judah, right? So now we're seeing where we got testimonies of some people saying that the blacks in the air and, and the West name and even the Bible says it's people of dark skin, right? Mm -hmm. But now let's see what, you know what I mean? We get where they say the white people are the Jews, right? So let's go and get some videos and let's see what they got to say. Amen. What happens when someone tries to revise the history of your people? This is something that Ashkenazi Jews face due to a false but oft repeated academic theory about their ancestral origin. What is this debunked origin story? Why are some people sharing it? And what does it say about Ashkenazi Jews and, more importantly, those who are spreading disinformation about them? First, some necessary background info. The two largest communities or denominations within Judaism are Sephardim and Ashkenazim. Today's Sephardim, or Sephardic Jews, are the descendants of the Jews who arrived on the Iberian Peninsula after the Babylonian and Roman exiles before fleeing to southern Europe, the Balkans, and North Africa after the Alhambra Decree, a record that is not contested. Ashkenazim, or Ashkenazi Jews, are those whose ancestors arrived in the Danube Valley and Rhineland areas after the Roman exile, with some accounts dating as far back as 321 CE. They said that they left and after 70 AD, and all of them are saying that he said the Sephardim went to Spain, which is that's the Iberian Pen Peninsula, and they went into Europe. Well, remember, you see the boot in Italy, Italy that's the seat of the Roman Empire, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. But there are some who call these historical events into question. A hypothesis dating back to the late 1800s states that Ashkenazi Jews are all descendants of the Khazars. In the 600s CE in southeast Russia, a multi-ethnic conglomerate of Turkic people founded a powerful state made up of people from many different ethnicities. This was the kingdom of Khazaria. The theory goes that in the 8th century, the Khazar ruling class converted en masse to Judaism on the instruction of their ruler. According to this line of reasoning, these Jews didn't migrate from Jerusalem and Babylonia into France and Germany, but rather migrated from modern Russia and Ukraine. The lack of proof for the theory hasn't prevented it from catching on with a number of geneticists, historians, linguists, and laypeople. It even has support from academics at universities in Tel Aviv and Sheffield, England. The problem is that the Kingdom of Khazaria was destroyed sometime in the late first millennium, and the next time we have records of Jews in that area, today's western Ukraine and Belarus, is over 400 years later. Additionally, DNA tests have shown a close relationship between Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews, as well as a connection to other Middle Eastern people, but no connection between Ashkenazi Jews and the Khazars. The Khazar theory is also dead on arrival from a linguistic perspective. The main language of the Ashkenazi Jews, Yiddish, shows no trace of Turkic origin. Yiddish is considered a Germanic language, with Hebrew and Aramaic words thrown in. As the Yiddish linguist and author Alexander Beter puts it, the personal names and surnames borne by Jews in Eastern Europe during the last six centuries, as well as the Yiddish language as a whole, do not contain any link to Khazaria. So, who's pushing this theory? Well, certain academics, for one. Their hypothesis got a big bump in 1976, when a writer and amateur anthropologist named Arthur Kessler published the now-debunked book The Thirteenth Tribe. Kessler thought that by proving Ashkenazi Jews were actually more European than Semitic, it would upend the foundations of European anti-Semitism. Ironically, Kessler's claims only served to feed anti-Semitism by accidentally resurrecting a theory that would only go on to serve the interests of bigots and the uninformed. After its publication, supporters expounded upon his claims even further, while detractors called it anti-Semitic. But why would the hypothesis be anti-Semitic instead of just another scholarly theory? It makes more sense when you look at some of the recent supporters of the theory, especially those outside of academia. These include online commenters, who use it to delegitimize the Jewish people by classifying them as a fake nation, and even political leaders like the Palestinian Authority leader Mahmoud Abbas. In a 2018 speech delivered to the Palestinian Liberation Organization's legislative body, 
Abbas quoted Kessler and his theory that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from the Khazars, not the biblical Israelites. The allure of the hypothesis to someone like Abbas is clear. It delegitimizes Jewish claims on the land of Israel. If Ashkenazim came from what's now Russia, then their assertions of an ancestral nationhood in the ancient land of Israel are easily dismissed. Too bad for Abbas that the science is not on his side, and that the genetic findings of Ashkenazi Jews point to people of Middle Eastern origin, not Turkic or Russian. It's also worth stating that the theory, and the subsequent not-your-land accusations thrown at Jews, completely discounts Sephardi and other Jewish communities, and makes it seem as if Ashkenazim and Ashkenazim alone are the only Jews, which is of course preposterous. It's not a stretch to say that throughout the centuries, anti-Semitic, xenophobic, and racist tropes have followed now a look similar- at that. Now, you got a racist, why is that black people? You see what I'm saying? Right. You see how they try to slide that in there? Like, oh, oh, you know, this is, this is this, you know, they're racist. Now watch this, watch how they slid this in here. Right. Path, unfounded ideas that gain- See that? Now, why would you put that in here? You talking about the Ashkenazi Jew. Opening door to Negro will mean closing it on a white man. <laughs> what did you put wow. that in this for? Wow. You see that? Mm -hmm. And you see, they do it so fast. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. It's that you don't catch it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A foothold because they serve the interests of anti religious bigotry, claims of genetic superiority, and political ostracism. See those black people? It's always yeah. fun to learn yeah. about conspiracy theories. Sure, everyone loves believing that Tupac is still alive, that there was a second shooter on the grassy knoll, or that the moon landing was nothing but a Stanley Kubrick short film. But let's remember that they are just that conspiracy theories. They're an entertaining showcase of the human imagination, but to take them seriously without doing some research? Not a good look. Ashkenazi Jews are definitely Jews, despite any debunked hypotheses that claim otherwise. In a world with limitless information at our fingertips, it's our responsibility to be informed consumers and to make an effort to sort out fact from fiction. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing here, consider no, subscribing. See, no, no. So you see, look, look, you see that? Look, yeah, look who's doing this. <laughs> yeah, look who's doing this, right? Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, Jerry so he's Lewis. sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey. But y'all peep the fact that <clears throat> he used no biblical. Oh. No, 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 they don't want to. No go biblical Bible. reference. Yeah, they don't want to go to the Bible. None, none whatsoever. None. none. Now, let's go and show the Roman Empire because he said that they were fleeing the Roman Empire. Let's go. You know, he said that they went all throughout Europe. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go look at the Roman Empire and let's see how much sense does it make for you to be leaving, running from your enemies. But you're going to go right into all of the lands of the Roman Empire. Right. Let's go well, and look real at quick it. before you do that. Or oh, why are you doing it? That's why I made the reference to the fact that he never went into the word of God. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if you don't know scripture, you that sounds convincing. If you don't know, it's like, okay, well, that sounds right. Because remember, the, the words that, that we use now are interchangeable to cover a mass of people. Like, again, we say the Gentiles, you know, the way they interchange that word is to right. say that's all white people or they all this, right. that, and the third. You yep. see what I'm saying? But we see that when right. you refer to the word of God, the way, way Christ referred to the word of God, you're not deceived. Yep. You see exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. But I just wanted to point yep. it out. He didn't he used no Bible reference. Then we just did this our third video showing where the yep. word of God shows who yep. are the true Israelites. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And and did you notice the words that he used? Debunked and conspiracy theory. Yeah, right. Everything right. was debunked conspiracy theory. Yep, debunked right. conspiracy theory. See, they put those little key words into your head that you would automatically trigger and not listen to somebody telling you that they, they're they not the real Jews, they're Khazars. Right. Now, this map, as you can see, is the map of the Roman Empire, right? So as we see Judea is down here, right? Right? So when they fled, and as he tried to say, that they fled up into this area. Why would you flee when this is the seat? That's Rome right there. Right. Why would you right. run into all of these <laughs> right. regions into North Africa and over here in Spain, all of that is the Roman Empire. Right. Why would you flee in those areas? Instead of trying to get away from your people, I mean, away from these people that's coming to kill you and take you captive, why wouldn't you flee south in this way to get out of there? You yeah. see? Amen. Nobody's gonna run into the same lands that they occupy. These people Amen. are trying to kill you. 
Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it we makes just no sense. so we just debunk that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right back at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so now let's go and I'm going to pull up an article from the Times of Israel, right? Where he talked about, you know what I mean? Oh, it's no uh, no genetic, you know, ties and all this. Well, I'm going to pull up an article from, from, uh, from 2014, and we're going to read this article. So let's go to the article. All right, so this article, as you can see, is from the Times of Israel, right? Amen. And as we can see, it's March 18th of 2014, right? So let's just kind of see what it is. I'm not going to read it all, but we'll just go through it, right? Our Russian and Ukrainian correspondents, Hirsch Ostafer and Izzy Grosser Spass, also contributed to this story, delayed due to the crisis over the Crimean uh, referendum, right? This is what happened in 2014 when, when Russia annexed Crimea, right? You know what I'm saying? And we're going to see what was happening here. Anyway, uh, let's pick it up here. Only yesterday came news that Syrian rebels planned to give Israel the Golan Heights in exchange for creation of a no-fly zone against the Assad regime. In an even bolder move, it is now revealed Israel with, will, will withdraw its settlers from communities beyond the settlement blocks and relocate them at least temporarily to Ukraine. So you see, they wanted to go back into those lands, Ukraine, right, and, and, and leave Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Ukraine made this arrangement on the basis of historic ties, see, historic ties, in exchange for desperately needed military assistance against Russia. This surprising turn of events had an even more surprising origin, genetics, right? A field in which Israeli scholars have long excelled. It is well known that sometime in the 8th to 9th centuries, the Khazars, a warlike Turkic people, converted to Judaism and ruled over a vast domain in what became southern Russia and Ukraine, right? What happened to them after the Russians destroyed that empire around the 11th century has been a mystery. Many have speculated that the Khazars became the ancestors of Ashkenazi Jews, right? Because yeah. the Khazars converted, right? right now, this, right. Is, this is the Times of Israel. This is their own article, right? Arabs have long cited the Khazar hypothesis in attempts to deny a Jewish historical claim to the land of Israel. So the Arabs over there know that y'all not the real Israelites, right? During the UN debate over Palestine partition, Kaim Wiseman responded sarcastically, it is very strange, all my life I have been a Jew, felt like a Jew, and I now learn that I am a Khazar. In a more folksy vein, Prime Minister Golda Meir famously said, Khazar Shmazar, there is no Khazar people. I knew no Khazars in Kiev or Milwaukee. Show me these Khazars of whom you speak, right? So you see, this is where, and now you're getting ready to see where it comes out about the 13th tribe. Contrary Hungarian, ex-communist and scientist, Arthur Kessler brought the Khazar hypothesis to a wider audience with the 13th tribe in the hope that disproving a common Jewish racial identity would end anti-Semitism. Clearly, that hope was not, has not been fulfilled. Most recently, left-wing his, Israeli historian Shlomo Sand, the invention of the Jewish people, took Kessler's thesis in a direction he had not intended, arguing that because Jews were a religious community descended from converts, they do not constitute a nation or need a state of their own. Mm. <coughs> Scientists, however, dismissed the Khazar hypothesis because the genetic evidence did not add up until now. In 2012, Israeli researcher Aaron Elhaik published a study claiming to prove that Khazar ancestry is the single largest element in the Ashkenazi gene pool. Sand declared himself vindicated and progressive organs such as Haaretz and the Ford trumpeted the results. All right, Israel seems finally to have thrown in the towel. A blue ribbon team of scholars from leading research institutions and museums had just issued a secret report to the government acknowledging that European Jews are in fact Khazars. Khazars. Whether this would result in yet another proposal to resize the words of Hatika remains to be seen. At first, this would seem to be the worst possible news, given the prime minister's relentless insistence on the need for Palestinian recognition of Israel as a Jewish state and the stagnation of the peace talks. But others have underestimated him at their peril. An aid quip with life hands you an atrog, you build a sukkah. Speaking off record, off the record, he explained, we first thought that admitting we are really Khazars 
was one way to get around Abba's insistence that no Jew can remain in a Palestinian state. Maybe we are we were grasping at straws, but when we when he refused to accept that, it forced us to think about more creative solutions. The Ukrainian invitation for the Jews to return was a godsend, right? Relocating all the settlers within Israel in a short time would be difficult for reasons of logistics and economics. We certainly don't want another flash line like the expulsion of the settlers in the Gaza Hiknaku, right? Speaking on a deep well on a deep background, a well-placed source in intelligence circles said we're not obviously talking about all the Ashkenazi Jews going back to Ukraine. Obviously, that is not practical. The press as usual exaggerates and sensationalizes. This is why we need military censorship, right? So you see, they always like censoring people when, when they don't like somebody telling the truth, right? All Jews, Kazaria 2.0, all Jews who wish to return would be welcomed back without condition as citizens. The more so if they take part in the promised infusion of massive Israeli military assistance, including troops, equipment, and construction of new bases. If the initial transfer works, other West Bank settlers would be encouraged to relocate to Ukraine as well. After Ukraine, bolstered by this support, reestablishes control over all its territory, the current aut autonomous Republic of Crimea will once again become an autonomous Jewish domain, the small-scale successor to the medieval empire of Khazaria, as the peninsula too was once known would be called in Yiddish, Khazaria, right? As you know, the spokesman continued, the prime minister has said time and again, we are a proud and ancient people whose histories here go back 4,000 years. The same is true of the Khazars, just back in Europe and not quite as long. But look at the map. The Khazars did not have to live within Auschwitz borders, right? So you see down here, you know what I mean? They're, they're showing all of the, the maps and everything. All right, so for we see from that article, they were talking about trying to go back to the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. But that's when, when Putin annexed Crimea and made it part of Russia. So he blocked them from being able to do that. That's why you had all of that stuff that was going on in 2015 and 2016. Right. Mm -hmm. But they were they were ready to kind of admit that they were Khazarians if they could get their butts out of out of the Holy Land. Right. right. Because, right. you know, what I mean, you're not going to be able to have no peace. And this is what they, they know. You're not going to be able to have no peace. But you see, but Russia also knows. Remember, Russians, the Rus was the one who destroyed the Khazarian Empire way back in the day. It right. was the Russians that did it. Right? right. And that's why they had always waged war on the Russians. But anyway, let's just talk. Let's go to uh, Arthur Kessler's book, and we're just going to read an excerpt from his book, too. So let's go to that 13th tribe by Arthur Kessler. Amen. All right. So this is the book, Arthur Kessler, the 13th tribe for anybody who's interested. OK, so now let's go and see. The, I'm going to show you the back cover of it. All right. OK, so this book traces the history of the ancient Khazar Empire, a major but almost forgotten power in Eastern Europe, which in the Dark Ages became converted to Judaism. Khazaria was finally wiped out by the forces of Genghis Khan, but evidence indicates that the Khazars themselves migrated to Poland and formed the cradle of Western Jewry. To the general reader, the Khazars, who flourished from the 7th to the 11th century, might, seeming, might seem infinitely remote today. Yet they have a close and unexpected bearing on our world, which emerges as Mr. Kessler recounts the fascinating history of the ancient Khazar Empire, a major but almost forgotten power in Eastern Europe at about the time that Charlemagne was emperor in the West. The Khazars' sway extended from the Black Sea to the Caspian, from the Caucasus to the Volga, and they were instrumental in stopping the Muslim onslaught against Byzantium, the eastern jaw of the gigantic pincer movement that in the West swept across northern Africa and into Spain. So when the Romans, I mean, when the Muslims start coming up, getting ready to go up into Europe, you see the Khazar Empire was there, and that's the reason why they didn't want to be Christians, and they didn't want to be uh, Muslims. So the Khazars converted to being Judy, to, to being the Jews, right? So let's go, let me read, if y'all can see where I see, where it says, thereafter the Khazars found themselves in a precarious position between the two major world powers. The Eastern Roman Empire in Byzantium and the triumphant followers of Muhammad, okay? So there you see Byzantium was the Catholics or the Romans, I mean the Christians, and mm -hmm. the triumphant followers of Muhammad was Islam. 
As Mr. Kessler points out, the Khazars were the third world of, the, of their day, and they chose a surprising method of resisting both the Western pressure to become Christian and the Eastern to adopt Islam. Rejecting both, they converted to Judaism. In the second part of this book, The Heritage, Mr. Kessler speculates about the ultimate faith of the Khazars and their impact on the racial composition and social heritage of modern Jewry. He produces a large body of meticulously detailed research in support of a theory that sounds all the more convincing for the restraint with which it is advanced. Yet, should this theory be confirmed, the term anti-Semitism will become void of meaning. As Mr. Kessler writes, it is based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims. The story of the Khazar Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever <laughs> perpetrated, mm. right? And we go into the 13th tribe, and then he talks about it on page 72, right? So on page 72, the part that I got highlighted right here, he talks about how the leader of the Khazars and what happened. Joseph, Joseph then, this is a guy who's supposed to be a Jew from in Spain. Joseph then proceeds to provide a genealogy of his people. No, this is Joseph, the one of the king of the Khazars. Through a fierce Jewish nationalist proud of wielding the scepter of Judah, he cannot and does not claim for them Semitic descent, right? So he claims we're not from the Semites, right? We're not descendants mm -hmm. of Shem. He traces their ancestry not to Shem, but to Noah's third son, Japheth, of more precisely to Japheth's grandson, Togarma. So remember, Togarma and Ashkenaz were brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he says that, you know what I mean? The, that our descent, our, uh, these Khazars, that we come from Togarma, the ancestor of all Turkish tribes. We have found in the family registers of our fathers Joseph asserts boldly that Togarma had 10 sons and the name of their offsprings are as follows. Wugar, Dursa, Avars, Huns, Basili, Tarnik, Khazars, Zagora, Bulgar, uh, uh, Sabir. We are the sons of Khazar, the seven. All right. So then when we go to page 16 of Arthur Kessler's book, we see where I got it highlighted of the migration of Khazar tribes and communities into those regions of Eastern Europe, mainly Russia and Poland, where at the dawn of the modern age, the greatest concentration of Jews were found. This has led several historians to conjecture that a substantial part and perhaps the majority of Eastern Jews and hence a world Jewry might be of Khazar and not of Semitic origin, right? Then we go down to here, this is what he says, right? How important in quantitative, in quantitative terms is that presence of the Caucasian sons of Japheth in the tents of Shem? Now, remember Noah's, what's the name? Prophecy that he told yep. that Japheth would dwell in the tents of Shem, Shem, right? Yep. One of the most radical propounders of a hypothesis concerning the Khazar origins of Jewry is the professor of medieval Jewish history at Tel Aviv University, A. M. Poliak. His book, Kazaria, in Hebrew, was published in 1944 in Tel Aviv and a second edition in 1951. In his introduction, he writes that the facts demand a new approach both to the problem of the relations between the Khazar Jewry and other Jewish communities and to the question of how far we can go in regarding this Khazar Jewry as the nucleus of the large Jewish settlement in Eastern Europe, the descendants of this settlement, those who stayed where they were, those who immigrated to the United States and to the other countries and those who went to Israel constitute now the large majority of world Jewry, right? So he says that these people, the Khazars, these are who most of the Jews that's in America and everybody is. This was written before the full extent of the Holocaust was known, but that does not alter the fact that the large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European and thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga, not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus, once believed to be the cradle of the Aryan race. 
and that genetically they are more closely related to the Hun, Ugar, and Magyar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Should this turn out to be the, the case, then the term anti-Semitism would become void of meaning based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims. The story of the Khazar Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. <laughs> mm. Right? So now, the other book that he showed in his little video was Slow Mo Sands, The Invention of the Jewish People. Go right? Slow Mo. Go Slow Mo. Go Slow Mo. <laughs> slow Mo. <laughs> yeah, Slow Mo. All right, so now sign. let's see what Slow Mo had in his book, right? <clears throat> All right, so in Slow Mo's book on page 236, what caused this silent lapse in the Jewish Israeli in memory? Aside from the traditional ethnocentric conception that in some form dominates every aspect of Jewish nationalism, there are two possible hypotheses. One is that the wave of decolonization of the 1950s and 1960s drove the Israeli memory merchants to avoid the very shadow of the Khazar past. So he's basically saying they didn't even want to tell people about the Khazar past. Mm -hmm. There was anxiety about the legitimacy of the Zionist project. Why? Because if y'all are Khazars, you're not the true descendants of Israel, right? So he says there was anxiety about the legitimacy of the Zionist product. Should it become widely known that the settling Jewish masses were not the direct descendants of the children of Israel. Such delegitimization might lead to a broad challenge against the state of Israel's right to exist. Then when I, down here, where we got it down here, the effect was to put the kibosh on any remembrance of Kazaria, right? Mm. And that's just some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Slow mo dropping science on them. Right. <laughs> but look, but even by their accounts, it still goes back to the biblical. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it still goes back to, you know what I mean? Being right. Biblical. Right. There's no way exactly. around it. You know exactly. what I mean? The word of God tells you who the true Israelites are. Yeah. Exactly. And he mm -hmm. told us that the Gentiles were going to try down Jerusalem. Right. Yep. And don't we see he that? He said that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so if they are Japheth, the sentence of Japheth, and they are the Gentiles, them being down there is fulfillment. Let's go to that prophecy what we're talking about with Noah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis 9, verse 27. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. All right. All right. So we see that that would make perfect sense. And if they are not the true children of Israel, if they are Jews who say they are Jews and are not, and they are Gentiles, and they're dwelling in Israel. They're dwelling in the tents of Shem, yep. of the Shemites. Yep. Right? So it's all in the Bible, right? All right there. Okay. Another book, you know what I'm saying, by a, another Jew. Now, remember, Arthur Kessler is a Jew. Uh, Shlomo Sand is a Jew. And, you know what I mean? Well, they're fake Jews. They're Ashkenazi. Yeah. They're <laughs> you know Jew what I'm saying? They're, they're Jewish. Ish. Yeah. You <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. Good there catch. You go. Good catch. Good catch. Good catch. All right. So now let's go to let's go to yeah. Benjamin Friedman's book, Facts or Facts. All right. So this is the book Facts or Facts by Benjamin Friedman. And then after this, we're gonna play a little clip and let you hear Benjamin tell the story for his, for yourself. But in his book, notice this is what he says. All right. And he talks about this and he says that the Khazars were phallic worshipers. And for those of you who don't know what phallic worshipers is, it's the male genitalia. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Right? They were phallic <laughs> worshipers, which is filthy, and I do not want to go into the details of that now. But that was their religion. And it was also the religion of many other pagans and barbarians elsewhere in the world. The Khazar king became so disgusted with the degeneracy of his kingdom that he decided to adopt the so-called monotheistic faith either Christianity, Islam, or what is known today as Judaism, which in re which is really Talmudism. By spinning a top and calling out any, many, miny, mo, he picked out so-called Judaism. And that became the state religion. He sent down to the Talmudic schools of Pumbedita and Shura 
and brought up thousands of rabbis and opened up synagogues and school and his people became what we call Jews, right? Mm -hmm. So they start teaching people, you know, many things about the Jews, right? right? There wasn't one of them who had an ancestor who ever put a toe in the Holy Land, mm -hmm. not only in Old Testament history, but back to the beginning of time, not one of them. And yet they come to the Christians and ask us to support their armed insurrections in Palestine by saying you want to help repatriate God's chosen people to their promised land, their ancestral homes, don't you? It's your Christian duty. We gave you one of our boys as your Lord and Savior. You now go to church on Sunday and you kneel and you worship a Jew and we are Jews. So you see why they had to change Christ's skin color and yeah, his absolutely. hair texture. Absolutely. Amen. Right? Amen. It says, but they are pagan Khazars who were converted just the same as the Irish were converted. It is as ridiculous to call them people of the Holy Land as it would be to call the 54 mi million Chinese Muslims Arabs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Then when we go down here and we look and see what else he says, it says, countless intelligence and informed Christians no longer accept unchallenged assertions by the Christian clergy that Jesus in his lifetime was a member of a group in Judea, which practiced the religious form of worship then, which is today called Judaism, right? Or that Jesus in his lifetime here on earth was a member of the racial group, which today includes the preponderant majority of all so-called or self-styled Jews in the world or that the so-called or self-styled Jews throughout the world today are the lineal descendants of the nation in Judea, of which Jew Jesus was a national in his lifetime here on earth, or that the cultural characteristics of so-called or self-styled Jews throughout the world today correspond with the cultural characteristics of Jesus during his lifetime here on earth and his teachings while he was here on earth for a brief stay. Christians will no longer believe that the race religion, nationality, and culture of Jesus and the race, religion, nationality, and culture of so-called or self-styled Jews today or their ancestors have a common origin or character. So he's basically saying they don't have the same lineage, right? Mm -hmm. The intelligent and informed Christians are alerted to the exploded myth that the so-called or self-styled Jews throughout the world today are the direct descendants of the Judeans amongst whom Jesus lived during his lifetime here on earth, right? They say, he says, it's a myth, right? Mm -hmm. That the Jews throughout the world today are the direct descendants of the true Judeans among whom Jesus lived during his lifetime here on earth, right? Okay, so again, we see again where there is something fishy going on with these people because right, their identity right, yeah, right, is rotten right fish. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Funky. Right? Mm -hmm. So we see that their identity is questioned. And even though they got on YouTube, guys trying to debunk all of this because they don't want this stuff to come out. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Well, you got something. Now, you look at how what's going on. You got people saying that the people that was put on slave ship and scattered all over the world, which fulfills Bible prophecy, by the That's way. Right. They're That's the right. real they're the real Judeans. That's right. You know what A I'm through saying? Z. A through Z exactly. fulfillment. And you people who say you're Jews and are not, but you're really Gentiles, you see what I'm saying? And you're mm -hmm. dwelling in the tents of Shem. Guess what? That fulfills Bible prophecy That's too. Right. Amen. You That's see? Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Right? Okay. But Amen. now let's go listen to Benjamin Freeman, you know what I mean? And he's gonna talk about this big ruse to get these people that migrated into Europe down into Palestine, right? And you're going to see how these World War I and World War II actually kicked off. Amen. All right, so this is actually Benjamin Friedman. So we're going to let him, let him uh, tell you some things for about 10 minutes in this video. The speaker is Mr. Benjamin Friedman, noted authority on Zionism and all of its schemes. Mr. Friedman is a former Jew, and I mean a former Jew. He has fought the communist world conspiracy tooth and nail, and stands today as a leading American patriot. We now
now take you to the secret platform to present Benjamin Friedman. The Zionists and their co-religionists rule this United States as though they were the absolute monarchs of this country. Now you say, well, that's a very broad statement to make, but let me show what happened while you were... I don't want to wear that out. Let me show you what happened while we were all at sleep. I'm including myself with you. We were all at sleep. What happened? World War I broke out in the summer of 1914. 1914 was the year in which World War I broke out. There are a few people here my age who remember that. Now that war was waged on one side by Great Britain, France, and Russia, and on the other side by Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Turkey. What happened? Within two years, Germany had won that war. Not alone won it nominally, but won it actually. The German submarines, which were a surprise to the world, had swept all the convoys from the Atlantic Ocean, and Great Britain stood there without ammunition for her soldiers, stood there with one week's food supply facing her, and after that, starvation. At that time, the French army had mutiny. They lost 600,000 of the flower of the French youth in the defense of their gun on the Somme. The Russian army was defecting. They were picking up their toys and going home. They didn't want to play war anymore. They didn't like the Tsar. And the Italian army had collapsed. Now, Germany, not a shot had been fired on the German soil. Not an enemy soldier had crossed the border into Germany. And yet, here was Germany offering England peace terms. They offered England a negotiated peace on what the lawyers call a status quo ante basis. That means, let's call the war off and let everything be as it was before the war started. Well, England in the summer of 1916 was considering that. Seriously, they had no choice. They were either accepting this negotiated peace that Germany was magnanimously offering them or going on with the war and being totally defeated. While that was going on, the Zionists in Germany, who represented the Zionists from Eastern Europe, went to the British War Cabinet, and I'm going to be brief because this is a long story, but I have all the documents to prove any statement that I make. If anyone here is curious or doesn't believe what I have possible. The Zionists in London went to the British War Cabinet and they said, Look here, you can yet win this war. You don't have to give up. You don't have to accept the negotiated peace offered to you now by Germany. You can win this war if the United States will come in as your ally. The United States was not in the war at that time. We were fresh, we were young, we were rich, we were powerful. And they told England, we will guarantee to bring the United States into the war as your ally, to fight with you on your side, if you will promise us Palestine after you win the war. In other words, they made this deal. We will get the United States into this war as your ally. The price you must pay up is Palestine after you have won the war and defeated Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Turkey. Now, England had as much right to promise Palestine to anybody as the United States would have to promise Japan to Ireland for any reason whatsoever. It's absolutely absurd that Great Britain, that never had any connection or any interest or any right in what is known as Palestine, 
should offer it as coin of the realm to pay the Zionists for bringing the United States into the war. However, they made that promise in October of 1916. October 1916. And shortly after that, I don't know how many here remember it, the United States, which was almost totally pro-German, totally pro-German, because the newspapers here were controlled by Jews, the bankers were Jews, all the media of mass communications in this country were controlled by Jews, and they were pro-German, because their people, in a majority of cases, came from Germany, and they wanted to see Germany lick the Tsar. The Jews didn't like the Tsar, and they didn't want Russia to win this war. So the German bankers, the German Jews, Kuhn Loh, and the other big banking firms in the United States, refused to finance France or England to the extent of one dollar. They stood aside and they said, as long as France and England are tied up with Russia, not one cent. But they poured money into Germany, they fought with Germany against Russia, trying to lick the Tsarist regime. Now, those same Jews, when they saw the possibility of getting Palestine, they went to England and they made this deal. At that time, everything changed, like the traffic light that changes from red to green, where the newspapers had been all pro-German, where they'd been telling the people the difficulties that Germany was having fighting Great Britain commercially and in other respects. All of a sudden, the Germans were no good. They were villains. They were Huns. They were shooting Red Cross nurses. They were cutting off babies' hands, and they were no good. Well, shortly after that, Mr. Wilson declared war on Germany. The Zionists in London sent these cables to the United States to Justice Brandeis, go to work on President Wilson. We're getting from England what we want. Now you go to work, and you go to work on President Wilson, and get the United States into the war. And that did happen. That's how the United States got into the war. We had no more interest in it. We had no more right to be in it than we have to be on the moon tonight instead of in this room. Now, the war, World War One, in which the United States participated, had absolutely no reason to be our war. We went in there, we were railroaded into it, if I can be vulgar, we were suckered into that war merely so that the Zionists of the world could obtain Palestine. Now, that is something that the people in the United States have never been told, they never knew why we went into World War I. Now, what happened? After we got into the war, the Zionists went to Great Britain, and they said, well, we performed our part of the agreement. Let's have something in writing that shows that you are going to keep your bargain and give up Palestine after you win the war. Because they didn't know whether the war would last another year or another ten years. So, they started to work out a receipt. The receipt took the form of a letter, and it was worded in very cryptic language so that the world at large wouldn't know what it was all about. And that was called the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was merely Great Britain's promise to pay the Zionists what they had agreed upon as a consideration for getting the United States into the war. All right. So we see, just to summarize it up, mm -hmm. World War I really was about these people, the Zionists, the Jews, who were over there in Germany. Germany was kicking France's butt, kicking Russia's butt, you know what I mean, and kicking they Britain's butt. Mm -hmm. They was kicking their tails. They were. These people were in Germany. <laughs> they, they was living in Germany. And they sold the Germans out, you know what I'm saying? And went and said, listen, Britain, you getting your butt kicked and all this type of stuff, but we can help you 
win the war. And the way we can help you win the war, we'll get America to come in here. You see what I'm saying? Because the Jews had controlled the media and all the newspapers and everything else, right? Still do. Still, Still do. Do, <laughs> do that, because that's our next, the next one. We're going to talk about the Jewish control media. We're going to get them. It ain't over. <laughs> but, but you see, and so they completely changed the narrative. That when they wanted Ger when they wanted Germany to win, you know what I mean? They told the United States, oh, Britain and all these people come against Germany and Germany and whatever. So the United States was pro-Germany. But then once they said, okay, we'll give you Palestine, which was basically the land that we know is Israel. That's why you got the Israeli-Palestinian conflict to this day, right? Mm -hmm. They made that declaration. They got them to sign, sign the paperwork. And we're going to show you the Balfour Declaration now. You know what I'm saying? That they had came in with the Rothschilds, you know, Lord Rothschild and them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Which are Jews, Ashkenazis, you know? Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is they sold out Germany and caused Germany, the place where they live, caused Germany to lose World War I, mm -hmm. right? Now, Hitler ain't even on the scene yet, yep. right? But they called Germany to get whooped. You see what I'm saying? They stole it. They stabbed them in the back. You know what I'm saying? Betrayed them. Drug America in. They changed up the, the narratives and then had America to come in and, and do all the dirty work mm, so that right. they could get, get down into Palestine. Right? Synagogue so is taken in action. Exactly. And big action. Exactly. Let's go show about the Balfour Declaration. What is the Balfour Declaration and why does it matter? On its 100th anniversary, many in the Arab world blame the declaration for the decades-old Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In 1917, British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour wrote a letter to Lord Walter Rothschild, one of Britain's most prominent Jewish citizens. Balfour called for the establishment... As you can see, that was the letter, right? Mm -hmm. In his... ...of a national home for the Jewish people within the former Ottoman Empire. At the time, the population of Palestine was less than 10% Jewish, and the declaration accelerated Jewish migration from Europe. In 1948, a UN resolution established the State of Israel, despite opposition from Arab neighbors. By then, the Jewish population had grown more than tenfold. The 1948 Arab-Israeli War followed. Since then, there have been 10 more wars, resulting in 5 million Palestinian refugees and thousands killed on both sides. Israel has occupied the Palestinian territories of the West Bank and Gaza for over 50 years. Today, the population of Arabs and Jews in Israel and the occupied territories is about equal. The Israeli-Palestinian crisis is one of the world's longest-running conflicts. 100 years after the Balfour Declaration, the conflict remains in urgent need of resolution. They're no business over there. Oh, right, yeah. They won't have yeah. any peace. Yeah. They're going to have no right. peace. Right, because that, that land belongs to Israel. You see what yeah. I'm saying? And, and until God is ready to bring the Israelites home, they ain't never going to have no peace because you can't trespass in that land. Amen. You see what I'm saying? That's the Holy Land. Exactly. You see? So, so let's go back. Look, it's the Please. Holy Land set aside for, 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 uh, for uh, mm -hmm. God's people, you right? Know I mean? You know, so and you God's, really, yeah, go ahead. And, and God's people can't come back until we accept Christ for who mm -hmm. He is. Amen. And get so that we have an atonement, so we can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. And God, that's where we're going to have to get into a video about the regathering, the true regathering of Israel, because Amen. what this was was their faking. The regathering to make it look like Bible prophecy was being fulfilled. And you know, see what word, I'm saying? There's that word, word again, fake. Right. Exactly. <laughs> fake. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know? All right. So let's go and let's go see some more what uh what uh Friedman had to say. The Jews were doing very well in Germany. No question about that. Now the Germans felt well, that was quite a sellout. It was a sellout that I can best compare. Suppose the United States was at war today with the Soviet Union. And we were winning. And we told the Soviet Union, well, let's quit. We offer you peace terms. Let's forget the whole thing. And all of a sudden, Red China came into the war as an ally of the Soviet Union. And throwing them into the war brought about our defeat. A crushing defeat with a reparation, the likes of which 
man's imagination cannot encompass. Imagine, then, if we found out that it was the Chinese in this country, our Chinese citizens, who all the time we thought they were loyal citizens working with us, was selling us out to the Soviet Union, and it was through them that Red China was brought into the war against us. How would we feel in the United States against Chinese? I don't think one of them would dare show its face on any street. There wouldn't be lampposts enough convenient to take care of them. Imagine how we would feel. Well, that's how the Germans felt towards these Jews. We've been so nice to them, and from 1905 on, when the first communist revolution in Russia failed, and the Jews had to scramble out of Russia, they all went to Germany, and Germany gave them refuge, and they were treated very nicely. And here, they sold Germany down the river for no reason at all, other than they wanted Palestine as a so-called Jewish commonwealth. Back into their former their status, and the Germans fought them in every way they could without hurting the hair on anyone's head. The same as one group, the uh, prohibitionists, fought the people who were interested in liquor, and they didn't fight one another with pistols. They did it every way they could. Well, that's the way they were fighting the Jews in Germany. And at that time, mind you, there were 80 to 90 million Germans, and there were only 460,000 Jews. Less than one half of one percent of the population of Germany were Jews. And yet, they controlled all the press, they controlled most of the economy, because they had come in and with cheap money, you know, the way the mark was devalued, they bought up practically everything. Well, Same things happened over here in America, you see? That, that all the Jews, you see what I'm saying, own, you know what I mean, one percent of them is running the whole country. And you yep. know what I mean, runs the yep. banks and everything, everything. right? Ain't nothing changed. Yep. In 1933, when the Germany refused to surrender, mind you, to the World Conference of Jews in Amsterdam, they broke up, and Mr. Undermeyer came back to the United States, who was the head of the American delegation and the president of the whole conference, and he went from the steamer to ABC and made a radio broadcast throughout the United States in which he said, the Jews of the world now declare a holy war against Germany. Uh, so not- this is World War II. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in 1933, as you can see, they actually declared war against Germany. So let me show you what, what he's talking about. All right. So in mm-hmm. 1933, as you can see, Judea declared war on Germany in, in March of 1933. Now remember, Hitler didn't get sworn in until March the 3rd. He became, uh, the, what, what do you call it, the Fuhrer or whatever, January mm-hmm. of 1933, right? Mm-hmm. But as you can see, down here in the left-hand corner, 14 million Jews dispersed throughout the world have banded together as one man to declare war on the German persecutors of their co-religionists, sectional differences and antagonists have been submerged in one common aid to stand by the 600,000 Jews of Germany. So they saying it was only 600,000 Jews <laughs> in Germany. Right, right. So we already know, and I ain't gonna say, you know what I mean? Because they, <laughs> <laughs> cause, you know, they, 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 you start talking with the H word, buddy, they really are trying to snatch this, word, <laughs> snatch this thing down, word. right? <laughs> but we remember the fake word too, right? right yeah, right, yeah, right, right. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have right. History. They have history of faking stuff. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> right. But you see, they actually declared war on Germany. You yep. see what I'm saying? All right, so let's go back to, to listen to Friedman. Now engaged in a sacred conflict against the Germans, and we are going to solve them into surrender. We are going to 
use a worldwide boycott against them that will destroy them because they are dependent upon their export business. And it is a fact that two-thirds of Germany's food supply had to be imported. And it could only be imported with the proceeds of what they exported, their labor. So if Germany could not export, two-thirds of Germany's population would have to starve. There just was not enough food for more than one-third of a population. Now remember what's happening over here in America now, where they're starting to mess with the supply chains? Yeah. Right? They boycotted Germany and start cutting the German imports of the food and stuff off. You know what I'm saying? In order to try to, you know what I mean? They tried to force Germany into persecuting the Jews so that they would have a reason to leave out of Germany. Mm -hmm. Now, in this declaration, which I have here, it was printed and paid, a whole page, in the New York Times on August 7, 1933, Mr. Samuel Antemeyer boldly stated that this economic boycott is our means of self-defense President Roosevelt has advocated this use in the NRA, which some of you may remember, where everybody was to be boycotted unless they followed the rules laid down by the New Deal, which of course is declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court at that time. Nevertheless, the Jews of the world declared a boycott against Germany, and it was so effective that you couldn't find one thing in any store anywhere in the world with the word made in Germany on it. In fact, mm. an executive of the Woolworth Company told me that they had to dump millions of dollars worth of crockery and dishes into the river, that their stores were boycotted. If anyone came in and found a dish mark made in Germany, they were picketed with signs, Hitler, murderer, and so forth, and like something like these sit-ins that are taking place in the South. R.H. Macy, which is controlled by a family called Strauss, who are, also happen to be Jews, a woman found stockings there, which came from Chemnitz, marked made in Germany. Well, they were cotton stockings. They may have been there 20 years, because of, uh, since I've been observing women's legs in the last 20 years, I haven't seen a pair with cotton stockings on them. So Macy, I saw Macy boycotted with hundreds of people walking around with signs, murderers, Hitlerites, and so forth. Now up to that time, not one hair of any Jew had been hurt in Germany. There was no suffering, there was no starvation, there was no murder, there was nothing. Now, that, naturally, the Germans said, why? Who are these people to declare a boycott against us and throw all our people out of work and our industries come to a standstill? Who are they to do that to us? And they naturally resented it. Firstly, they painted swastikas on stores owned by Jews. Why should a German go in and give their money to a storekeeper who is part of a boycott, who is going to starve Germany into surrender into the Jews of the world? who are going to dictate who their premier or chancellor was to be. Well, it was ridiculous. That continued for some time. And it wasn't until 1938 when a young Jew from Poland walked into the German embassy in Paris and shot one of the officials that the Germans really started to get rough with the Jews in Germany and you found the men breaking windows and having street fights and so forth. Now, for anyone to say that, I don't like to use the word anti-Semitism because it's meaningless, but it means something to you still, so I'll have to use it. The only reason that there was any feeling in Germany against Jews was that they were responsible, number one, for World War One, number two, for this worldwide boycott, and number three, did I say for World War One, they were responsible for the boycott, and also for World War Two, because after this thing got out of hand, it was absolutely necessary for the Jews and Germany to lock on in a war to see which one was going to survive. In the meanwhile, I had lived in Germany, 
and I knew that the Germans had decided Europe is going to be Christian or communist. There is no in between. It's going to be Christian or it's going to be communist. And the Germans decided we're going to keep it Christian if possible. And they started to rearm. And their intention was by that time the United States had recognized the Soviet Union, which they did in November 1933. The Soviet Union was becoming very powerful and Germany realized, well, our turn is going to come soon unless we are strong. The same as we in this country are saying today, our turn is going to come soon unless we're strong and our government is spending 83 or 84 billion dollars of your money for defense, they say. Defense against who? Defense against 40,000 little Jews in Moscow that took over Russia and then in their devious way took over control of many other governments of the world. But all right, so now we see in World War II how they provoked Germany, you know. Germany, you know, Hitler even was willing to let them people go, you know what I'm saying? Back, back to Palestine, you know what I'm saying? And let them get their money and all that. He had an agreement with them to go. But they tried to starve the Germans and all this type of stuff and provoke Germans and all this. And then when Germany started getting rough with them, you know what I mean? It made everybody say, hey, you know, Hitler is a monster and all this type of stuff, right? But now what they don't like to tell people is what Hitler, you know what I mean, said about the Jews, about them, Ashkenazi, and what he's on record of saying about the Negro. So now let's go and talk about that. Let's mm. hit it. Let's hit it. All right. All right, so it says, Hitler said even in his death, he will start World War III. One of his soldiers asked how. Hitler replied, the day mankind finds out that I was trying to defend this nation, Germany, from then, that's the day World War III will start. But on that day, mankind will learn that I was trying to save my nation from the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Jews. For if America wins the war, then they will conquer the world and forever be a slave to the Jews, and they will try to conquer God. Do you know who America has in its possession? No, the soldier replied. The American has the jewels of God. The Americans have stole God's precious jewels. What do you mean his precious jewels, the soldier asked. Hitler said America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negroes. They are the true Hebrews. What a foolish move and a direct challenge to God, and they plan on moving these false white Jews into a state of Israel. America is desperate in its attempt to win this war using atom bombs on Japan. America will destroy the whole world in its attempt to conquer it. When America and its Jewish slave masters conquer the world and the world realize I was right, then all nations will begin a third world war to dethrone America of its rule. Every nation will soon possess atom bombs of their own. It will be the end of most of the world as we know it. Why will the Jews control America, the soldier asked? Hitler said because the white Jews know that the Negroes are the real children of Israel. And to keep America secret, the Jews will blackmail America. The Jews will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the Negroes knew who they were. The white citizens of America will be terrified to know that all this time they've been mistreating and discriminating and lynching the children of Israel. They will fear God will destroy them as he destroyed Egypt for doing the same thing. So the elite, the Illuminati, keep this as a secret at all costs, at all costs. After I die, I will one day cause World War III just by this message, which will be like planting a seed in people's mind until it sprouts once they nurture that seed and seek more truth and learn Hitler was right. I did the world a favor by killing the false Jews before they designated a false state of Israel. But I fear I have failed world would fall into the hands of Satan. <laughs> up, see man. if I could find the right. on these, stepping on these roaches. <laughs> man. Yeah. Man. Mm, mm, mm. That's all I'm going to say right there. Is, mm, right. Mm. Now, I had always looked to try to find out where that quote come from. Right. 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 And as you can see right here in the book titled The Nazis World War II by the author Edwin Herstein, you know, and this is where supposedly this quote comes from, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also it written in this book, Jerusalem, uh, Yerushalayim or whatever. I just ordered this book, so you know what I mean? It's supposed to be here. I ordered it off of Amazon, right? Oh, okay. And supposedly that, that quote is in that book. But you know what I'm saying? But I do. 
All right. I do have another book. Do you see what I'm saying? That people have referred to. And it's this, right? Mm -hmm. The Nazis, right? By Time Life, right? Mm -hmm. But now let's show something. Let's go here and show you what it said about Hitler said in this book. All right. So in this book, as you can see, you see Hitler and them are, are sitting here watching a movie, right? And what it says down here about Goebbels and Hitler personally appraised a new German movie when the Fuhrer complained that films espousing the Nazi line were too scarce. Goebbels rushed a pair of anti-Semitic pictures into production. So you see they always saying anti-Semitic, right? In one segment of a Nazi instructional film, right, the genetic heritage of the Jew is purportedly traced to Oriental, or as you see, that's those the people that we talked about in the South Pacific Islands, Negro, right, near Asian, and Hamitic people. Because remember, with the Hamites, the Canaanites, that, that the Jews did mix with the Canaanites. You see what I'm saying? The nations God told them not to mix with, right? Hence the film concludes the Jew is a bastard, right? <laughs> Below the villainous title character of Jutsu, a violently anti-Semitic melodrama, okay, and all that. <laughs> but now when we see the picture in the book, you see the Oriental guy, then they got the Niger, you know, the, the, the black, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you see the Hamitic where he said, you see with the woolly hair, he mm -hmm. said all this. And then he said, now this guy with the big nose, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> He's a bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Lewis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he called him a bastard, right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> man, we can't make right. this stuff up, man. Nah, nah, nah. Hey, he got to take that out. I forgot we was on camera for a half a second. All right, Zechariah chapter 9. I'm going to pick it up in verse 6. Chapter 9, verse 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. All right. All right, so when we see Ashdod, you see where Ashdod is, you know what I mean, across from Jerusalem. So when the Bible, when it tells us that a bastard would dwell in Ashdod, you see where it is, right? So now, once again, the Bible tells us that, you know what I mean, somebody's going to be down there that ain't really the people that's supposed to be there. You know, that dude's good the Bible. It's all in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. It's all in there. Every last bit of it, right? All right. So now let's go and let's, let's, let's pick up, you know, how these Christians, you know what I'm saying, are so daggone disease, deceived and don't want to tell the truth or nothing. So, you know, they, you got, you got Christians, you see all this information out here. But they want to sell, they'll tell it about these people not being the real Jews. But they never say who the real Jews is over here in America, right? No, nope. So now let's go, let's go do a little expose. <laughs> Over 4,000 years ago, God appeared to Abraham in Mesopotamia and said to him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Abraham obeyed the Lord and came into the promised land of Canaan, where he lived along with his son Isaac and his grandson Jacob, who was later renamed Israel. Israel and his twelve sons went down into Egypt because of a famine in the land of Canaan. And there they multiplied into a mighty nation. The Egyptians felt threatened by the powerful nation of Israel living among them. So they enslaved them and made their lives... See how the depiction? See, <laughs> see mm -hmm. how they changed the depiction? You see what mm -hmm. they're doing? Mm -hmm. Bitter Big time. with hard bondage. Yeah. After 430 years in Egypt, they were led out of bondage by Moses, then crossed the Red Sea and went into Arabia, where they received the law of God at Mount Sinai. The generation of Israelites that left Egypt with Moses were not allowed to enter the promised land because of their lack of faith in the Lord. They were forced to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, 
until a new generation rose up that trusted the Lord and entered the promised land with Joshua. For about 400 years, the 12 tribes of Israel were ruled by the judges according to the law of Moses. When they desired to have a king like all the other nations, God appointed Saul to be their king, who reigned over them for 40 years, followed by King David, who reigned 40 years, and David's son Solomon, who reigned 40 years. During the reign of Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was at its most glorious, and the first temple was built. But because Solomon's heart turned away from the Lord in his old age, God told him that ten of the tribes would not be ruled by his son. After the death of Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was divided, and the northern ten tribes were ruled over by a series of wicked kings who were not descended from David and Solomon. The northern kingdom retained the name of Israel and eventually had Samaria as its capital city. The smaller southern kingdom became known as Judah, had Jerusalem as its capital, and was reigned over by the descendants of David. Starting in 2 Kings 16, the people of the southern kingdom became known as Jews after the name of the kingdom of Judah. Because of the wickedness of the northern kingdom of Israel, they were overthrown and taken captive by the Assyrians. The Israelites who remained became intermingled with the heathen nations who came in and occupied the land. These people would become known as the Samaritans, and the ten tribes of northern Israel would never be a nation again. The southern kingdom of Judah would eventually be taken captive into Babylon as a punishment for serving other gods, and the temple would be destroyed. But after 70 years, the Jews returned to Judah, rebuilt the temple at Jerusalem, and continued to be ruled by kings descended from David. At the time of Christ, the nation of Judah had become known as Judea and was under Roman rule. Jesus Christ and his disciples preached the gospel throughout Judea, seeking after the lost sheep of the house of Israel. After three and a half years of ministry, the Jews rejected Jesus as their Messiah and convinced the Roman governor to crucify him. Three days later, he rose again from the dead and showed himself alive to his disciples before ascending up to the right hand of the Father in heaven. Shortly before Jesus was crucified, he prophesied that as a punishment for rejecting him, Jerusalem would be burned, the temple would be destroyed, and the Jews would be led away captive into all nations. This prophecy was fulfilled in A.D. 70 when future Roman Emperor Titus conquered Jerusalem. For over 1,800 years, the Jews remained scattered. There's your lie. You see? Yeah, yeah. You see that? They put all of their fake images and all this type of stuff so they could tell a lie. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I mean? Now, again, as we talked about early on, Look where they got them going. They got them going into the north. Why would you go right into the teeth of the Roman Empire, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And they just completely discredit, you know what I mean, that the Bible says, you know what I'm saying, that they, the branches would be cut down beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, right? Yep. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, when did they go into captivity? Nobody ever took them into captivity. They never right. went into slavery. You know what I'm saying? Never. But this, so this is where the lie is told and this is how, you know what I mean? This is why they change the color of the people and then they tell the lies, you know what I'm saying? And then push this off into Christianity, right? And get people deceived with what's really going on. All mm -hmm. right, let's, let's fast forward this. All right. It's not Jesus Christ. It's the Antichrist who is going to unite Jews with false Christians with every other religion of the world. In order for the Jewish Antichrist to unite all religions of the world, the devil must convince mainstream Christianity to see the Jews as fellow believers, in spite of their rejection and blasphemy of Jesus Christ. Tele-evangelists such as John Hagee ignore the clear teachings of the New Testament and apply the promises made to Abraham in Genesis 12 verses 1 through 3 to modern-day Christ-rejecting Israel. Anyone who holds a biblical view that the Jews are no longer God's chosen people is labeled by the media as an anti-Semite. 
Israel's fight is our fight. We are one. We are united. We will not be discouraged. We will not be defeated. We will not be intimidated. We will not sit down. We will not be silent. We are the worst nightmare of the anti-Semites of the world. The victory is going to be ours. If you will not stand with Israel and the Jews, then I will not stand with you. Thank you, and God bless you. You know, we stand with the people of Israel. I am asking you to join with me and every Christian and every Jew and every freedom-loving American to demand that this president and Congress do whatever is necessary to eradicate the evil of ISIS and radical Islam from the face of the earth. It is time to act now. And I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. Ah, uh, you don't want to be an enemy and of Israel. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Yes, amen. You're either for or against her. You're one of the two. The man, the church, the nation that blesses the state of Israel, the Jewish people, will be blessed beyond measure. Blessing Israel doesn't just mean, so well, I bless you. Yeah. You have to stand with them in the route of need. Uh -huh. Of course, the Bible says in 2 John 9 through 11, that whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. And what are you doing when you bid someone Godspeed? You're blessing them. So today's evangelical Christianity is saying that we must bless Israel if we want God to bless us. Yet 2 John teaches that if we bless those who deny the Son of God, we are a partaker of their evil deeds. Evangelicals, of course, are a great segment of American Christianity. The Southern Baptists, the Pentecostals, the Assembly of God, all of these are very fervent groups. Uh, and they've basically been very pro-Israel pro-Zionist, many of them have actually closed the door to conversion by saying, oh, well, you don't need Jesus. You're a Jew. In the Houston Chronicle, John Hagee was quoted as saying, I'm not trying to convert the Jewish people to the Christian faith. There is nothing in the Night to Honor Israel that does that. In fact, trying to convert Jews is a waste of time, he said. The Jewish person who has roots in Judaism is not going to convert to Christianity. Everyone else, whether Buddhist or Baha'i, needs to believe in Jesus, he says, but not Jews. Jews already have a covenant with God that has never been replaced with Christianity. What the what? <laughs> <laughs> so now you see, you see, you see, that's why when you, when we talk about stolen identities and how the Christians, mm -hmm. they got Christians running around here live. And you know, I got yeah. one more thing we got one more thing to show is the How, uh, Howard mm -hmm. Rosenthal mm -hmm. in, interview, and it's really going to bring this point home. But mm -hmm. you see how he sit there and said that the Jews don't need to accept Christ, right? And we've, I mean, in our last videos, all we've shown, that's the reason they got kicked out. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Because yeah. without Christ, you have no, no atonement. atonement. Zero. No. None. So here it is that you got these Christians running around here talking about, and see, that's why they can't figure nothing out because they want to lie. They want to tell the truth about who the true Jews are, right? Yep. They yep. run around, everybody is lying on Hitler and saying Hitler was so this and sell that, but Hitler's the only one who told the truth about the whole matter. You yep. see what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they tried to destroy and wipe Germany off the map. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because America is fully a participant in deceiving the Christians and the real Israelites. Yep. You see what I'm yep. saying? Because yep. America is run by the Ashkenazi fake Khazar Jews. Period. Bottom line. Small, small head. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why this Christianity that's why Christianity ain't got no power. You see what I'm saying? Uh, 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 God uh, How can you as a I mean, come on, bro. How can you call yourself a person or a child of God and deny your atonement. You're right. Right. But right. you say you believe in the Bible. You know what I mean? Like it, yep. 
this stuff, I mean, we can't make this stuff up, y'all. We no, cannot no. make this stuff up, no. man. No, no. God, you know what I'm man. Are yeah. you serious? <laughs> and you got all these people calling themselves Christian ministers, and they run around here. But that's why they're getting ready to get in trouble. And that's why now you see God is waking the Israelites up. Yep. You know Big what I'm saying? Now you got the Israelites standing on the corner talking about, they ain't the Jews. We are. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just yeah. like Hitler said, now, you know what I'm saying, all of America is starting to say, well, wait a minute. They were put on slave ships. They were sold. They were, you know, hung off trees. They were, you know, have had they, you know, they are the tails and not the head. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They are having all this stuff happen to them where these people are running everything. They got control of the media and all this type of come stuff. On. And see? they are rich. And if you have control. And they are rich. Rich, come on. And look, and right. if you control the media, why isn't Christ centered information being pushed? Thank you. Because Thank if you control everything, you got the money, then we should the world shouldn't be the way it is today. That's right. Exactly. That's right. But, exactly. we, know who, but we know who they really are. That's why they exactly. that's why the they synagogue push what they of push. Satan. Yeah. The bottom exactly. line. Yep. That's exactly synagogue who of they are. Satan. You small yep. back uh, uh, the synagogue yeah, of say it again, Satan. The <laughs> synagogue of Satan. I said it. Small. The Bible says it, man. The <laughs> Bible has made it true, man. And like I said, yep. and, and I I've come to this conclusion. If you don't believe the Bible, the Spirit of God, we know this, the Spirit of God ain't in you. That's I don't right. care what church right. you go to. I don't care right. what church you go to, you shucking and jiving and up and in. If your pastor's not teaching this, then how yep. can you understand your history? How can you really, uh, I mean, yep. I've been yep. saved for years. You know what I'm saying? I've yep. never heard a pastor teach this. No, never. Yeah. no, no. Yeah. Never. Yeah, yeah. and nope. that's the problem. And that's why I don't, nobody know nothing, both Christianity, because remember, the, and, this, and this is where we're going to separate this thing with, you know, the Hebrew Israelites. And if y'all watching so we can tell y'all, you can't take salvation away from the Gentiles either. You that's see what right. I'm saying? You don't have because that they're grafted in. They're Amen. grafted in. If they got the spirit of God in them, then that's why they know that the real Israelites are, you know what I mean, the African-Americans and the South Pacific Islands and yep. all those yep. who were scattered. They yep. understand it too. But you know what? You got some people that's being told lies, you know what I'm saying, and misinformed, just like we were. You yep. see what I'm saying? Yeah, big time. Big you know, time. so you, you just got a bunch of liars all over the place. And that's why what did, what did, when we read at first and second Corinthians that, you know what I'm saying? Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light and his ministers into ministers of righteousness. righteousness. Yep. Yep. Big time. And, 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 and why would God bring them back into the land? With them still rejecting Christ, if Come that's on. the reason why he kicked, kicked them out, them out yeah. of the first yeah. place. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. Bring it on home, man. Come yeah. on. You see yeah. what I'm saying? All right, so let's Come go on, look man. at this Howard Rosenthal interview, because he breaks it down and then they 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 whacked him. But let's finish this and this <laughs> yeah. is how we're gonna finish with it. <laughs> Now this is this is an interview with Howard Rosenthal, and he's going to tell you a lot in this. So you know we're going to go ahead and read this. Religion too must be taught, and through this necessity we have labored. As the Jew Karl Marx stated, religion is the op- opiate of the people. With our control of the textbook industry and and the news media, wow, <laughs> we have been yeah. able to hold ourselves up as the authorities on religion. Many of our rabbis now hold professorships in supposed Christian theological seminaries. We are amazed by Christian stupidity in receiving our teachings and propagating them as their own. This is one of the main reasons for the power and control Jews have attained over, the, over white nations. The adopting of Jewish ways. Um, as Henry Ford stated, the Christian cannot read his Bible except through Jewish spectrum and therefore reads it wrong. The International Jew volume, uh, what's that, volume four, page 238. As a result, Christians don't have God's word on a certain matter. They have the Jew's word. Uh, Judaism is not only the teaching of the synagogue, but also the doctrine of every Christian church in America. Through our propaganda, the church has become our most avid supporter. 
this has even given us special place in society. Um, they are believing the lie that we are the chosen people and they Gentiles. These deluded children of the, of the church defend us to the point of destroying their own culture. Jews need not to have their, their finger on every button that caused a destruction or a Judaization mm -hmm. of Christian civilization, as in many cases they have their proselytes or Gentile fronts to do it for them. This truth is evident even um, to the dullard when one views history and sees that all wars have been white fighting white in order that, in order that we maintain our control. We controlled England during the Revolutionary War, the North during the Civil War, and England and America during World War I and II. Through our influence of religion, we were able to involve the ignorant white Christians in war against themselves, which always impoverished both sides while we reaped the financial and political harvest. Anytime truth comes forth, which exposes us, we simply rally our forces, the ignorant Christians, they attack the Crusaders, even if they are members of their own family. Anyone ha who has been in the forefront exposing the truth of Jewish issues can attest to this fact stated by Mr. Rosenthal. Mm. <laughs> See that? Mm. So they know yeah. that they they pimping and, and, and deceiving the Christians, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got these pimps right. in the pulpit. <laughs> yep, yep, know no yep. Knows. And what, 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 what we said again in Corinthians, you know, no marvel that Satan's ministers, you see what I'm saying, becomes ministers of righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brother Bob. You ready? Mm -hmm. W, according to the latest scholarly research, your ancestors are not Israelites, but Mongolians and Asiatics from Eastern Europe and Western Asia. So your ancestors were thousands of miles from the Holy Land. They never ever saw the Holy Land, proving that your people were not the chosen people of God. So what? What difference does it make? We have been taught the big lie for many years that Jews are God's chosen people. So it does make a difference, a very grave difference. What grave difference? Does it not prove that the great majority of Jews today are Khazar in origin? Your ancestors never tried the lands where Christ walked. They never knew Jerusalem and Palestine, so how could? Okay, what the hell difference does it make now? I find so many things that you have said as being repulsive and your arrogant manner in boasting, as it were, to admittedly being a part of this gigantic, this heinous plot against mankind. And at times you attempt to brush things off by saying, what difference does it make? So much of what you have admitted staggers me. In fact, I lack the words. Mr. Mr. R interrupts here. That's because you're a Gentile. You don't understand. You never will until it's too late. And my hope personally is that the American people do not. Mr. R paused here. There is so much of what you have said that as an individual, people may not believe you. They may not believe this interview. All right, and this is it. This is where it says towards the end, dear reader. After the tape machine had been turned off, I accused Harold Rosenthal of not living up to our agreement and replying truthfully to my question as to the Jews being God's chosen people. He replied, "We are God's chosen people. Most Jews do not like to admit it, but our God is Lucifer. Mm. So I wasn't lying, and we are His chosen people. Lucifer is very much alive." I was stunned. I had no further comment. I had watched this arrogant, boastful person change at times like a chameleon that changes his color. Many times he showed a hatred, yes, even a venom. At the conclusion, I felt unclean being around him. <laughs> the, hidden the hidden tyranny has been revealed. Much of what Harold Wallace Rosenthal said brought to the surface a reality we veterans have known all along. But this Jewish treachery is more shocking when getting it all in one package. It has been alleged that Heron Rosenthal was killed because he talked too much, so it is understandable. If true, it is much as he made such shocking statements of almost seven years ago that we now see as a reality. As an example, we cite the staggering exploitation of the Negro and the black presence everywhere today. We minimize Mr. R's boasting of their control of our, church, of our churches. Unbelievable then, 
Now in the fall of 1983, it is a reality that the Supreme Court sanctions IRS approved state churches. Mm. When Rosenthal made such statements about church control, we felt that he was bragging. But in the present day persecution of the church and its ministries here in America by the government is today a fact. So with that, we'll conclude, right? That, you mm. know, yeah. They know that they played the Christians. They know who the Negro are. You know what I'm saying? They keep us ignorant. They mock us. They make fun of us. That's why they use the media, because they're in control of the media. Yep. And they've always used the media <laughs> to tell these lies, right? Yep. And yep. <coughs> so. And, and real quick, and to show you how deep that goes, right? <laughs> and, how, and how they use the media play this whole mind thing right so if you want to you want to teach the people how to be inferior right you put images right? we talk about that right so let's take this one image right and, 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 and remember this is not a black or white thing i don't want people to get caught up in that you know what i mean this is a christ thing you know what i mean this is a, right. the most right. high thing that we're talking about yep. if you're going to get in regardless of your skin color you accept christ or you don't you dig yep. what I'm saying? And when we talk yep. about truly accepting, we talk about accepting all of what the Bible says. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you right. want to take one part of it and don't believe, you want to take another part and mix it out. The Bible says don't add, the word. The word of God says don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing from it. Right. We didn't add nothing right. to this word. And we hey, preach, take brother, from. Preach, brother Leroy. You know Amen. Amen. Leroy. All we bringing, all we showing us with the when we and we really we allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us to see, That's right. share this That's information. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yep. but I want I want to be leave the people with this, okay? Especially uh, Israel and <laughs> the true Israel, right? Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Now, when we think about uh, how the, how the, the small hats control the media, right? Who do they? Who is the number one superhero that everyone knows that we all grew up on, right? Superman. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. He can't nobody beat Superman, and they, and really when right. you break down Superman, he's almost like they. <laughs> Okay, he's, mm -hmm. you know, but that's a whole nother subject, okay? And so they give Superman to those, you know, to the small hats, okay? But the image mm -hmm. is that this is this great man, he's super, da 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 you know. And then what, what do they give the, the true, to the true Druid, the, the true Jews, what do they give us? What do they give us? Superfly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, pimp. Forward. Drug dealers, come you on, see yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, come on. How all, do they portray us? All yeah. to get us to do Serena right. to go against the go against the most. Come on, brother. Here exactly. we go. Exactly. They get us to go against the most high. You know, yeah, they right. get us yeah. to disobedience. And then we look at a fly. <laughs> what is the fly? One of the most disgusting insects mm -hmm. that you can possibly come across. Yep. The yep. flies yep. are fly. Yep. You don't want no fly yep. flying around. They nasty. So yep. what they call us super fly. We super fly. Yep. Mm, why, yep. why they Superman? So you see how the psyche. Oh, yeah. right. taking us so far and, we, and you know what I mean and then we talk and then we get into the word of God and then y'all yeah. listen to these prosperity ministers who take you straight to hell and you keep sitting up listening to that bull and that God yeah yeah you know yeah. what I mean yeah. so exactly. I mean, come on man it, it's time yeah. to wake up it's real oh, yeah. time to wake up man oh yeah and it goes, yeah. To, the, yeah. goes to the point of what you're talking about they take us from believing and understanding who we are as God's chosen people to the lowest common denominator. Come on. That's uh -huh. what they give Come us. On. That's who we are. Uh -huh. We were uh -huh. slaves and yeah, we pimps and hoes and, uh -huh. and hustlers uh -huh. and all that type of stuff or whatever. And now they're killing one another and all those types uh -huh. of things. Uh -huh. So so it's, it's been a big game play. This stolen right. identity, straight up. Exactly. And we Absolutely. see how and we see how identity plays a key part. And yeah, we, exactly. You know, and we can go on for days about how our, yep. our communities were so jacked up to this day yep. from the oh, churches. Yeah. Yep. You got just yep. as many. You got many. Uh, you got as many liquor stores as you got churches. The church oh, people yeah. oh, yeah. Why is there no change in the community? Why? Because the right. spirit of God is not in these churches That's no right. more. That's right. Exactly. And we go, and we, and we go back and we go back yep. to the source. Why? Because our ancestors and even still to this day, we reject the Messiah. Come on. Exactly. And worship all kind of other gods and everything else. Yeah. You, try to, yep. you got some people walking around talking about the Bible ain't true. That's the white man book. Christianity yeah. is yeah. the white man. Yeah. I keep on believing yeah. that crap. 
Yeah, yeah. And then exactly. that, that train of thinking will take you straight to hell. And we're oh, going to yeah. talk about exactly. that too. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. And yep. all you're doing is falling for the tricks of the enemy. That's what his right. whole goal is, to right. steal the kill to destroy you. The word of God says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There you go. My people are God told us that. Absolutely. Why do we think the cracker happened? You know what I'm saying? Why do we yep. think we got sex violence and all this stuff in our That's music? Right. That's right. It's to take us from the Amen. most high. It's the, it's, look, we have we're a covenant people. As Amen. long as That's these right. people, these people that control this media, can continue to get us to think along these lines, mm-hmm. we are doomed. I ain't gonna say we. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, uh, but we, as a whole, yeah, we ain't. Yeah, yeah. We ain't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. in the fight. Right. Right. It's right. just like Noah's up. As, right. as we continue to put this word out, and we're no better than anybody else. We're just doing what God's call us. Guess what? It's, right. hard it's hard to do this. It's hard yep. to do this. That's knowing right. that yep. people are not going to like you, knowing that your life is going to lie every day that people see you, knowing, and knowing that the enemy knows who you are. So right. if we don't stay in the word, you know what I mean? We're talking. Oh yeah, yeah. This oh, is yeah. not this yeah. is not you know what I mean, but we know that through God, through Christ, we can do all things. We that's know right. That's right. That's right. That's so right. we're gonna preacher, walk brother. in it. Preach it, brother. And, and yep. whoever accept it, accept it. If you don't, no, know, know there's something else waiting for you. That's right. Exactly. I mean, exactly. I can't I can't put it no no plainer than that, man. I mean, yeah, right. right. That, Come on, that's good. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. That 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 sums yeah. it all up. So like I said, but, but this is going to lead us where we're going to go in the next. We're going to talk about the Jewish control media, and we're going to show all that, too. You That's see right. what I'm saying? That's right. We and why you. they we portray us That's in right. the ways that they portray us, right? right. You see why? what I'm saying? Right. It gets, That's coming. get you out of the cup. That's right. Exactly. That's there right. you go. Expose all right. small hat. Expose Absolutely. We see you. We see you. All of it. <laughs> Absolutely. I got my eye on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so with that, we're closing it off. You know what I'm saying? This is our three-part series about stolen identity. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And then we're going to start transitioning and talk about the Jewish control media and just keep building off of all of this, you know? That's right. And, and, and hopefully people watch it and share the video. You know what I'm saying? Like, subscribe. You know what I mean? Share the video. You know what I mean? You got to share it so people can understand this stuff because it ain't being taught in church, right? That's right. That's right. White Amen. and black churches. Yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. If, if you're, right. if you're, listen, if you're a child of God, you need to be prepared. Yeah. The spirit gonna, but, the, but the bottom line, the spirit going to resonate with you. If it don't yeah, resonate exactly. with you, the yeah. spirit of God ain't in you. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Absolutely. It ain't in you. All right. So y'all have a blessed one. God bless everybody for watching this video. Hopefully, Lord, you know, pray, get you some wisdom and understanding. Ask the Lord to bless you, fill you with faith, wisdom, understanding, you know what I'm saying, and knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like Leroy said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. God bless y'all.